We are Squawking Dead, a podcast pulverizing episodes beyond the Walking Dead universe. Sometimes we give you news, sometimes we make you laugh, and most times we go deep. I wanted to intro this episode. It's a very special episode that both Rachel, Sharon, and Bridget recorded back in December, and they recorded a bunch of episodes to be premiered at some point, discussing all things uh, mostly TWD, but also Fear TWD, The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead. And uh, this one in particular, particular is called the top five best episodes of the walking dead universe if you want to you can stop right here and check out the video description or our ko-fi or patreon pages which you can get to at ko-fi.com slash squawking dead or patreon.com slash squawking dead and get the unedited episode recording of this episode right now it contains not only this particular episode this final episode uh, the top five best episodes of the walking dead but also the top five worst characters on the walking dead They're all in one video available for streaming right now. It's about two hours and 40 minutes for those of you who support us at either Kofi or Patreon. Other ways to support us, you can buy our merch, which you can get to at squawkingdead.com. Click the main menu on the top left and choose merch. And there's probably a sale going on right now. I think it's $16 t-shirts and everything else is up to 35% off. Or you can head over to phineascoffee.com. Excellent, delicious, specialty grade roasted to order coffee, which you can get at 10% off when you use the code squawking dead all one word in checkout other ways of supporting us obviously you can buy us a coffee during the stream by either heading over to ko-fi.com slash squawking dead or you could join a membership tier for as little as a dollar a month not much housekeeping we're gearing up for fear the walking dead's final season coming up very soon we're also gearing up for the camp which we will be at we will have a vendor table so that you can buy merch you can talk to us you can hang out you can drop your stuff off probably it's a very big table thank you to at real ryan gm on twitter our survivors tier member and lovely benefactor that's basically it so far but we have tons and tons of videos to premiere as well as a couple of things giveaways i wanted to let you guys know if you hadn't seen it already on our twitter which you can get to at at squawking underscore dead we're nearing 2000 follows and we were wondering there's a tweet up there what you think we should give away at 2000 follows so uh get on that tweet reply to it and let us know what you think we should be giving away once we reach that follower count in any case here is the walking dead's top five episodes discussed fully discussed by Rachel Sharendy and Bridget. So take it away, ladies. <laughs> Mitchell says, let's give away Dave's soul. <laughs> There's not much to give away. Oh, yeah. well, Sharon D, I'm not going to talk about the Fear Countdown just yet. We're going to, let's just say this much. Keep a lookout on our social medias. Head over to squawkingdead.com. Follow us everywhere you think is appropriate for you. And make sure to enable all notifications. Be on the lookout for some interesting fear ramp up, which will lead up to some very interesting stuff that we're going to be requiring your input, but also uh, some interesting stuff that we may be giving away leading up to fear. So thanks, Sharon D, for that reminder. I didn't want to give away too much, though. In any case, here are The Walking Dead's top five best episodes, according to Sharon D, Rachel, and Bridget, as well as some of you, which overlapped some. You might be surprised. I am Sharon D, a.k.a. Blazy Gardner, and this is Rachel Burt, a.k.a. Cosmo Mom 09, Bridget, Ponky, I'm sorry, not Ponky, Ponky, Brewster, (laughs) B-R-U-I-S-E-T-E-R. Our first top five tonight is top five episodes. And by this, again, I meant your top five episodes, not necessarily the top five episodes by critics or whatever what episodes made you feel a certain kind of way about things i'm gonna start with my number five which was carl dies oh and i don't remember the episode number but it's the one okay it's called it's It's called honor painting with judith and he's in the garden and he looks up at the sunshine oh my god and the song that's playing about Mm. the sunshine and i coming into this series after fear had already watched a lot of breakdowns and synopses Synopses. that's what i was looking i already knew that carl died i'm not gonna let this but i already know carl dies it's no big deal and it was two o'clock in the morning and i had been binging the shit out of this i'd watched seven episodes in a row (laughs) 
and it got to the part where oh, Carl was painting with Judith and all that, and I literally was sobbing. That episode really, really hit me really hard, and that is why it's my number five top episode because it just really really pulled my heartstrings i have never cried or felt the same way over character dying as i did over carl mm, it's a really good one it still makes me cry i wrote five of my favorite episodes but i don't know if i can rank them well i'll spoke to your head number your five head. is gonna have to be 506 i think no way out and this was just after alexandria's walls were breached by the walkers and a lot of stuff happened during that episode that i really really enjoyed the main reason i picked that as one of my favorites is because we see all of the alexandria residents coming out and defending their community obviously rick kind of gets the ball rolling and then michonne goes out there and then aaron goes out there and 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 everybody else and and everyone gets involved and then we see the alexandria residents we should probably do something and that whole <laughs> scene just really gets to me and i'm like <laughs> They're becoming a family and fighting for their home. And that's also the episode where Carl gets his eye shot out. So it's super sad. And we start the episode really awesome because Daryl blows up the saviors. We have that really cool dynamic between Denise and the wolf. We really mm -hmm. kind of see more of Denise in that episode. She was scared at first, but then really pulls her shit together. And I already loved Denise at that point. But after that episode, I'm like, hell yes, girl. I love you even more now. And when she gets to the infirmary and she's like, got to get my shit together. Got to save people. And just puts it on. Also, <laughs> Carol tells Morgan she should have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I automatically puts that in. Okay, in top five. Somewhere. It's going to be worked in there. Somewhere. Denise is a total badass in that episode. But I do kind of love the fact that the wolf shows compassion towards her while i don't love the whole it's never too late for anybody mentality because I, I don't agree with that i do love that he's able to make that sacrifice for her it's not even on my list but that is a great episode <laughs> this is super hard there's way too many great episodes this limit really down five but right do you feel this episode is where alexandria and our group really started to mesh because they finally fought together and came definitely together. Mm -hmm. And Rick has that really heartfelt conversation with Carl at the end about how he was wrong. He said, I thought living behind these walls for so long would make these people weak, but it didn't. They really stepped up and saved their community. And not only did the Alexandrians step up, so did Eugene. That was, I think, one of the first times we see Eugene with a weapon in his hand really out there killing walkers. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Takira, AJ... Mitchell and Aiden all placed that episode on their list. Wow. Oh. Awesome. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, it's a good one. It's Bridget, a what was your number five? Okay, my number five was an episode called Morning Star, season uh, 10, episode 11. When I was putting together this list, I was picking a lot from the early seasons. Sorry to interrupt you, but can I ask you, most of mine... I had to make myself go into the later episodes to pick favorites. I had one from season 11 on the list and I, sh and I crossed it off and put one from season 10 mm -hmm. instead. Which is weird because I love some of the later episodes. Push came to shove. What was my favorite? It's in the earlier seasons. Morningstar came out in a time during The Walking Dead in which I wasn't super loving the direction that stuff was going in was kind of really over the whisper stuff and i really oh. just wanted it to move along this was such a big episode and such a big point in that story carol is at daryl's camp ezekiel begs her to come back well ezekiel confides in her that he has the thyroid tumor which is really concerning and they you know <laughs> wait, 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 maybe it's not over for them maybe that's not really the direction it goes in but it, it gave me hope just that really epic scene at the end where they're defending hilltop and that's where the morning star title comes from because it's the weapon that daryl utilizes and we see some really cool stuff from the whispers that we hadn't seen prior because they're mixing up juniper or whatever and making that flammable oh, yeah, yeah they're yeah. making the flammable liquid out of i think it's juniper and the, so they're throwing it and everyone's like oh what is that <laughs> sappy yeah 
it blows up. So we see some really cool maneuvers out of it. And plus the tension was really high because you weren't sure if everyone that was at Hilltop was going to survive. And we even see some some deaths. So we saw some some pretty cool tactics battle wise from both sides. New weaponry on both sides. There's some lesser known, not I don't want to say lesser known because I don't really mean it that way, but smaller characters that we see injured and, and harmed in that battle as well and, and killed. There's just some really cool stuff that happens in that episode and it moves the storyline along quite a lot in one episode, which I, I really liked at that point. I remembered really loving it when it came out and it still stands the test of time now. Very good choice. Yes, that was an yeah. incredible episode. Okay, we'll move on to number four. My number four is season 10C. I don't remember the number, but it's the title is One More, and that is the episode with Aaron and Gabe. Oh, yeah. I love the whiskey scene. That is probably oh, one of yeah. my number one scenes of the entire show is when Gabriel is... And I don't even like whiskey. It's not that I like it or anything <laughs> like that. I just love the way they shot it, and I love how calm it was mm. it was just two guys talking about whiskey and the juxtaposition between the totally pretty calm quiet first half <laughs> and then the super tense freaky it was one end of the spectrum to the other even from the beginning when they walk out into the field and they throw the the alarm clock out into the field and it wakes up all the dormant walkers mm -hmm. that's still just so beautifully quiet showing all the different shots of the flowers and the cinematography in this episode was great. It was a very intense episode, too, when they were sitting at the table with Maze. I've made no secret that Father Gabriel's not one of my favorite characters. I don't hate him, but sitting watching that scene, I'm like, wait, 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 but wait. <laughs> <laughs> it was also when you got to the end, it wasn't just tense. It was it went to the horror aspect with him having his brother tie. Even though it was it was a COVID episode, there's only three people in it they managed to cover almost every aspect of the show in one episode the calm you have a little bit of humor your found family aspect because these mm -hmm. two guys are kind of working together and tense and then you have the absolute just horror at the end plus you almost get that nod back to uh, season three or four it's so similar to the governor and rick meeting and drinking whiskey and having that mm. really weird tense conversation over a table it's one of the only ones from 10c that i don't feel like is in 10c yeah. it could fit anywhere else even though it's yeah. a bottle episode ish it doesn't feel like a bottle episode so much yeah my number four is episode 506, Consumed. Beth has just been kidnapped by Grady Memorial, and Daryl and Carol have to go, are out looking for her. It has my favorite line. Well, that's not necessarily true. My other favorite line is just silly. My first favorite line is actually from 301 Seed, when they're by the campfire, and Daryl and Carol go off by themselves, and she says, <laughs> do you want to fool around? <laughs> <laughs> but this is this line has more meaning to it. Daryl and Carol find themselves in an office and they're arguing over this painting that they see on the wall. And Daryl says, mm. looks like a dog sat in paint and dragged his ass all over the place. And Carol's arguing that she likes it. And they kind of go back and forth. And she says, you don't know me. And Daryl responds with, yeah, keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Almost a throwaway line, but <sighs> their relationship is just everything. The episode starts with, what carol was doing after rick banished her from the prison too we get a little glimpse backwards into what carol's been up to we see her at the shelter and then she brings daryl back to it so we get a little glimpse into her past as well daryl does that super kind gesture where he kills the walker and the and the child walker so carol doesn't right. have to there's so much about their friendship in this episode that I just absolutely loved. This is also the one where they see the van parked down the bridge and they get in the van and then the van flips over. And there's mm. just that moment right before where she grabs his hand and they look at each other. This could be it. They might not, they might not survive this. It was nice that they were together for that. I guess it's even more, it's even nicer that they survived it, but <laughs> That whole chunk of episodes, the lead up to that, Daryl and Beth and Beth being taken by Grady, those were all very strong contenders on my list. Ugh, I really struggled. That story arc is one of my favorites. That whole season four into five is just so good. 
My number four was season four, episode 11, Claimed. Mm. This is a great episode. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite episode. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, okay. Carl Papa has just happened. Yes. <laughs> Carl's pudding episode has just ended. And there's a knock at the door and it's Michonne. And Rick has shared with Michonne that it's really important that Carl has her as a friend because he can't be dad and best friend. And he's super thankful because Carl's laughing. Carl and Michonne are eating breakfast together at a dining room table in a, in a house that they're in, the claimed house, as everyone refers to it as. And they're talking about soy milk. And it's this little goofy story that we get from Carl about how he ate, he had soy milk when he was in school. Him being like a regular kid and his friend was lactose intolerant and he tried some of his soy milk and I threw up all over the place. And Michelle's like, there's no way that's what happened. And, and he's like, okay, fine. I didn't, but I was like, ugh, ugh. Like, <laughs> it shows such a, a whimsical side of this world and it shows carl as a kid it's such a sweet moment and then he's laughing so hard and he's joking and he says i'd rather have judas formula and a switch is flipped and he is just done because they're fearful that judith is dead at this point right. and we know because we've seen the other side that she's with tyrese and carol and lizzie amica but at that time they're they're unaware of what's going on he runs off and michonne takes him out on a run after that and they do the question answer thing in a house that they're clearing we get more of michonne's backstory about what happened with andre and with mike and mike's friend that i can't remember the name of we saw a little bit of in the previous episode because that's that was where michonne goes back into having the two walkers and and kind of disappearing into nothingness and then ends up killing that walker that looks vaguely similar to her but it's supposed to be her <laughs> they find crazy cheese and then carl doesn't want it michonne is eating it disgustingly we also get the scenes with rick and the claimers in the house because rick stayed behind to sleep and it's some of the best scary stuff in the show even though i knew <laughs> rick was gonna live because i'd already watched all the fucking recaps and everything i was legitimately terrified that entire sequence oh it's so good when len knocks can't remember the guy's name down on the ground and is choking him out and the guy looks over and sees rick and he's trying to tell len to stop but len's like no they're going by claimer rules. The tension is so high. And then Rick is, he has to turn his watch off because the guy can hear the clicking of the watch. And then he's sneaking around under these guys. And then he has to kill the guy silently in the bathroom. And then he's outside and Joe is on the porch. Rick is about to shoot him because he can see Michonne and Carl walking up and protect them. He's going to try to take on this whole group of these really horrible people. <laughs> and then at the end of that, they're on the train tracks and they find a sign to head to terminus and we already know at this point that everyone else is headed there i considered this one for my number three but i actually ended up going with another episode the reason i went with it instead was because it was kind of the beginning of delineating carl and michonne's relationship it was the first kind of little side trip that they took together and left rick behind it really kind of showed what kind of kid carl was trying to be and how michonne was going to help him be that mm. and i know Everybody's going to laugh because my number three is clear. It says Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> but I mainly chose it because of the Michonne Carl dynamic in the episode, which I mm. just love because Carl and Michonne was probably my, my favorite pairing of the entire show. It wasn't claimed. It was the one before. The pudding okay. episode. <laughs> when Michonne oh, is at the door, Rick looks through the eye, the eye it's hole. It's for you. It's for you. I was it's like, so oh, good. that was so, so sweet. Yeah, that was my sweet. favorite part. When Michonne first gets up to the porch and she looks through the window and just takes that moment to observe Carl and Rick together. That is such a sweet moment. I found moment. them. I it's what you them. needed That's at that what moment. She's thinking I found it's, them. You know, it's what you really needed at that moment in a week to week watch because everyone was separated and you. Yeah, and it was one of those things where you're like, oh my god, how are they ever going to find each other again? We thought this was going to happen at the end of the farm, and then it didn't. It gave you like a little bit of hope that you needed that they would all find each other. Oh, yeah. Brian and Christy Boykin 
also chose Clear as one of their favorites. My number three and number two kind of go hand in hand. Surprise, surprise, it's another Carol and Sarah episode. (laughs) Shocker. (laughs) I had to make a decision here, but my number three for me was Diverged. That was 1021 in 10 C. I know not a lot of people like this episode. There was a lot of grief because of mostly Carol chasing the rat around. And I don't know if people just missed the whole point of that. This was Carol at her wits end. We are watching this woman just collapse. Yeah, she's chasing a rat, but that rat represents so much to what is going on in her life right now. She needs this win. She needs to catch this fucking thing and it broke my heart to watch her just collapse like that and and break down i also love the beginning of it how we see carol and daryl together and then we literally see them diverge and dog chooses carol that's a smart dog (laughs) almost to her detriment in that episode Uh, the jerry and carol moments in this Mm -hmm. episode i love jerry so much and i love every scene and every episode that jerry's ever in but he actually i have it on my on my mug here he says to her a friend is someone who thinks you're perfect even if everyone else thinks you're broken that wasn't a king ezekiel quote that was something that came from jerry's heart and even though it was kind of a sad episode in terms of carol and daryl's relationship it had to go on my list because It made me feel so much about what was going on between the two of them. And they did it so beautifully visually too, not just in the dialogue that was happening, but visually we see them falling apart. And for the first time watching this show, I thought, are they broken? How are they going to fix this? I'm like a tweener caroler when it comes to romantic versus platonic or whatever. I truly believe what they have transcends all other relationships. It's not even about romance. They are truly soulmates. Every definition well, of family. The they would well, 100% die for each other. Even though they take separate paths at the beginning of the episode, by the end of this episode, they're back on the same path. They come back together again. That was kind of a metaphor for their relationship. No matter how many times they may break apart, they always come back together again. But not really. That's kind of my point. At the end, yes, they're under the same roof. He came back home or whatever. But there's just this moment at the very, very end where we see Daryl going through the gate. And he's like, come on, dog. And he stops for a minute, wants to go back out and say something, but he doesn't. And then we see them on screen together. And they're both closing the doors at the same time. Are they closing the door on each other right now? Are they going to come back from this? Gut punched. And I watched this episode a lot when I was privileged enough to be on The Talking Dead and get to ask Melissa McBride a question. This was the episode that had aired. I got to watch it early. (laughs) (laughs) My number three was season three, episode one, Seed. It is. This is the one where they get to the prison. And that is why it's my favorite. The prison was my favorite location. The whole concept of a zombie apocalypse and being able to to be in a prison. Honestly, other than Dawn of the Dead, the original 1978 Dawn of the Dead, other than a mall, a prison is where you want to be. It was such a game changer for me in terms of locations. On Fear, the reason they said that they didn't stay at the mall when they went to the Mm -hmm. mall in season five was because there are too many entry and exit points Mm -hmm. to fortify so even though it had all the resources and etc there were too many doors and access points of entry to make it a truly safe place to stay i feel like you could totally block some of those fucking exits and entry points off totally well well and well from walkers yes but from people people might be able to get probably not and they're gonna want what you have because you exactly. got you really got because you have a Cinnabon, twelve like the, year old cream cheese icing. Who is it down for that? <laughs> it's the thirteen year old in me, the the mall rat in me. That's like the mall. I can like, finally I have everything I want from Spencer's. <laughs> <laughs> finally, hot topic is mine. Oh, um, the lava lamps. So, so the prison was a really cool interaction uh, and location. They're road worn. At the beginning of this episode, right? Because they've been they've been yeah. out there for Isn't months. This, Lori's about to give birth. 
Is it the episode where Rick stops Carl from eating the dog food after he opens the can? He finds in the house. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It so is. The episode starts with them walking through that house and you see how yep. a well-oiled machine they right. have become, which is such a cool juxtaposition. I, yes, I did like that. I like yeah, that it's, part a lot. It's really yeah. cool. They all are exhausted and they're, they're worn, but they're so good at what they do now from being out there for so long. They find the prison and then they clear it, the outside area, which is a really cool scene and you get to see them working together and i'm working towards something and it's something really meaningful and then you also get and i know that people think it's so cheesy and i do not care go screw yourself sit on it okay <laughs> sit on it sit on it the parting glass yes Herschel asks beth and Maggie, if they can sing the parting glass, it's technically an Irish folk song. People call it an Irish drinking song, but if you listen to the lyrics, yes, it is about <laughs> drinking, but it's about drinking your last drink ever. This is a really beautiful Irish folk song about death and, and the inevitability of it and what it's like to lose people. And yes, Emily Kinney has a music career. And yes, she was probably trying to push it through the show. So like, what? Why wouldn't you? More, more power <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah, so Who what? cares? Who cares? But also use, use the platform. She's adorable and her voice is so sweet. It's a really great episode. It leads into some of the best and worst moments. I this is the where they one. meet the prisoners. Yeah. The prisoners show up at, at the, the end. very end because that was a really cool and interesting concept. And we and we got Lou Temple. Who doesn't love Lou Temple. So. Right. <laughs> Seed almost made my list too, just because of Carol's line to Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you just that's talked that about up. that. You that's, just talked yeah, about that's that. in that episode too. <laughs> my number two and my number one, they're almost interchangeable. Number two is two oh seven, the episode where. Shane opens the barn and they kill all the walkers come out in Sophia's. Home. I love it. And it, the reason is because of the ending, because I think Shane was right. I know it's going to start a firestorm among some people. You are <laughs> not here. Cause um, I fucking love like, Shane. I feel like Shane was completely right. Cause again, I binge the show and I, I remembered this was a thing, but seeing it happen in a recap and seeing it happen in front of you are dissimilar. One of the things I've noticed recently rewatching it, how much, Walker Sophia is very much like life Sophia, very timid and shy. Mm, mm -hmm. and instead of coming directly at Rick like all the others, she was very hesitant in her walk. I like that that kind of leans into the variant and the memories theories that mm -hmm. we've had floating around lately in all the shows. But the main thing I love about this is they're going to kill anybody. <laughs> this is the Ned Stark moment where you're like, oh shit, they'll kill anybody in this fucking show. Nobody's safe. Yeah. No, they'll kill this little girl and turn her into a walker and make Rick shoot her in the yeah. face. Did season two break at episode six and we came back to this? This was right before the break, I believe. Because this season only had 13 episodes. I think it was okay. 207 and then we had a break and then we came back to Nebraska. I, I'm pretty okay. sure. Either you came back and you were like, oh God, or it ended on that. And you're like, what am I supposed? Yeah. Yep. Now it process ended. this. Because it was like, what am I supposed to do yeah. until February or like whatever <laughs> was coming back? Now let that and process. I will say Shane was right. Shane was just not tactful in handling things. That was his problem. Oh no, not graceful at all. I didn't disagree with him in a lot of stuff, but he <laughs> did not know how to handle this well, himself at all. In Shane's defense, the few times he did try to present things in a rational manner, he was shot down. Nobody's listening. You're not listening to me. Rick, you're out there physically helping them bring walkers to the barn. What is wrong with you? Shane had already gone crazy at this point because of the whole weird CDC rapey business. Right. Yeah. He was and already kind of nuts but, at this point. But I and then like Otis after that. He was over. somewhat justified in this moment. Rick, what are you doing? You, Lori I drove him nuts. Let's just be clear. We're gonna, Agreed. We're gonna get to, <laughs> we're gonna get to that. Agreed. We will Agreed. get to that. We will get. We will get to that. <laughs> <laughs> My number two is the flip side to Diverged, and that was Bond's episode ten oh six. Carol and Daryl at their strongest. Carol going out. She's looking for Alpha's horde. Daryl knows what the fuck she's up to. She says, oh, I'm going to see where Negan went. I'm going to see if I can find out where Negan is. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna come. <laughs> and while they're out there, he's like, all right, what are we really looking for? He sees right through all of her crap. And I love it. He calls her on it. Also, <laughs> Carol has a line that I appreciate so much because it's never addressed on television shows. When do people go to the bathroom? 
And she says, I have to go pee. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thank uh, you. No one goes to the bathroom on, on TV shows. I will say <laughs> that the Walking Dead universe does not shy away from people using the bathroom. Well, especially fear because we Mark, get we caught Morgan, Morgan on the toilet. We got Morgan on the toilet <laughs> and we get <laughs> Dwight peeing on the side of the road. Also and, in the uh, mall. Alpha has, Alpha also has in a the mall dream. episode. Yes, it's also in the mall episode, by the way. <laughs> mm. Thank you, AMC. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for giving also, some reality to also, right? also, yes. realistic also, television. Yes. <laughs> Saul Goodman has a gold toilet. <laughs> True. Well. Right. Right. True. I also love this episode because we see the hilarious dynamic between Negan and Beta. And it is just <laughs> pure gold. Rachel, I've noticed a trend in your choices. Oh, have you? <laughs> have you now? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's Negan. Negan. Negan is the trend in your choices. Even the episode where Negan wasn't a character yet. I was going to say, this is the first episode that Negan has been in. <laughs> okay, my number two is episode one of season one days gone by i don't know about you guys but uh long before the walking dead was even a thing i was a really big fan of zombie content always have been don't know why used to have nightmares about him as a kid don't know how that's a thing Ooh. but it was and as a result i've always been really fascinated with this idea i do remember in third grade i was taught by a haitian family about voodoo and zombies someone who came in and taught us about voodoo and and i remember the conversation because it had a lot to do with having a spell or a curse put on you and people thinking that you're dead and you not being and then burying you alive and this is very distinct in my memory this may be where the zombie stuff comes from and that would have been more traditional voodoo zombies which is completely different than the romero zombies that we saw in the mm. 70s and beyond but as a result i've always loved zombie stuff 28 days later has and I and screw you if, if you say I don't care if they're infected instead of I don't care okay I don't get we're not gonna get into that I'm classifying it as a zombie movie okay <laughs> moving on 28 days later has one of the best opening scenes of a horror movie of all time that mm. silent intro and it's so similar to the first episode of The Walking Dead mm -hmm. because very. Mm -hmm. He wakes up in the hospital. hospital. Yeah. He's all hooked up. That silence created such a tension and did something to me that no horror movie had done prior to this. I was terrified of horror movies. I loved like, old horror movies. If the worse, the better for me. And I think it was because there was like, a level of detachment that I could have. But I went and saw 28 Days Later in the theater at age 13. <laughs> not okay not okay to see this movie <laughs> it was at night i was not okay i was not okay maybe i was 14 but i was young and i couldn't drive i was hanging out with a friend who could he took me to this movie and then drove me back to my dad's house i was staying in north carolina at the time because that's when i could get away with seeing movies like this is when i was with my dad we were living in wisconsin we had moved and so i was back for a summer visit and saw this at the budget theater terrified that rest of the time i was there because my dad my dad lived in an area that was all wooded behind mortified that some infected creature was gonna be coming through the window and killing me and there was a computer tower oh there was a computer tower in that room that had a red light and the way oh. that it hit the window it looked like two red eyes oh god oh god it was uh okay so anyway oh my so my, mine was vampires because i oh read my salem's lot when i was a kid Ooh. And in Salem's oh, Lot, yeah. the vampires would scratch at the window. People would open the window and invite them in. And yep. there was a tree right outside my window that when the wind blew, oh. it would scratch on the window. Nope. And I was 11, maybe. And I would lay in my room with that fucking tree scratching on the window and being afraid to move any movement just I made. Just burn the whole house down. Right. Right? <laughs> like, just burn the whole thing it down. It was terrible. <laughs> this is a long tangent to tell you that that has since then embedded in my brain as one of the scariest scenes in horror cinema ever honestly the movie after that it's it's not as good that beginning 30 minutes is the best part of the movie it's, yeah. it's a good movie i do love it but it's not my favorite by any means but when i 
unknowingly stumbled upon The Walking Dead. I do not remember how. I just know that I watched it the first night it was on. I think my horrific boyfriend at the time was a real shitbag and might as well have been named Ed. I think he may have told me that it was about zombies and that I would like it. I do not remember, but I know that I watched it that night and I was instantly hooked because it gave that same level of tension that that first 30 minutes of 28 days later gave me at age 13 at age (laughs) 12 years ago do some math at age 20 (laughs) at age 23 i was a 23 year old woman who could not go to the bathroom by herself after this episode (laughs) okay and i know how you guys feel about morgan because a character later but morgan jones in the beginning and Dwayne. They held such a a strong spot in my heart that when Clear came around, it wasn't what I wanted, but I was so thankful to finally see Morgan again. Morgan was I liked Morgan on The Walking Dead. It wasn't until The Walking Dead. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, I will say that his back and forth, I gotta kill everybody. I gotta say that got annoying. (laughs) That got (laughs) annoying. But season one and season three, Morgan, I was totally down with that. It was the fear, Morgan specifically season so, six yeah it has infuriated me it's a really iconic piece of television history that i was just so happened to be blessed enough to see in that moment and it changed uh, clearly it changed my life forever it's baffling to me and that's my number two guys that's not even my number one that's not even the number one <laughs> my <gasps> number one is episode 610 when yep. Rick and Carol meet Jesus for the oh, first time. Oh, that is a great one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Is, it's the next world. Because I find it hilarious. I It makes me it's laugh so funny. the entire episode. It's like a Benny oh, Hill yeah. skit. <laughs> yes. It's such a relief. I think it's probably the funniest episode out of all of them on the show. Out of all, <laughs> the it's right in the middle. This wonderful midway point, funny, relaxing kind of episode. But also... Because it has the part where Carl leads Deanna to Spencer so that Spencer can put her down and bury her. Carl just got it, man. He just got it. When Michonne was questioned, like, why did you do it? He's like, because Spencer should be the one to do it. Just like if it was you, I would do it. And that just Mm -hmm. broke my heart. My number one is 610 because it made me laugh and it made me cry in the same fucking episode in about equal Ugh. part. Good call, Sharon D. That wasn't even yeah. on my radar. That is a phenomenal I should have, episode. I should have known that. You've told me a hundred times <laughs> that, that that's your favorite episode. <laughs> and I always think that it's not Suntai, but not Suntai is actually 611, the next one, when they bring Jesus back. Also, let me say the end when Jesus is standing at the end of the bed. <laughs> He's like, need to talk. It's just so funny. It's hilarious. Go yeah. get dressed, guys. <laughs> this is totally unrelated because it's not one of the reasons it's my favorite. One of my, it's not my favorite, but it is the the genesis of Rick and Michonne's relationship. But when she asks him if he got toothpaste, and he just slaps a bowl of fucking <laughs> lifesavers in her hand. The That's ju- the kind the, of life they're living. The they're balance. Living right now. Number one, my. Th- Favorite episode that I could just watch over and over and over again. 103, Tell It to the Frogs. I do love that one as well. That's a really good one. If I could have put, like I said, episode one, two, (laughs) three, three would have been really high on my list. I love this episode. The episode starts with, I think, I've never seen Michael Rooker perform like that. When he's losing his shit shit on the roof Mm. he is going this way and that way then he comes back and he realizes he's chanting and it just holy shit dude amazing performance by michael rooker also that even gets you in the feels even if you don't like merle you got to feel for him in that moment not to mention that moment when rick gets out of the truck and Carl's all sad because yeah. I'm assuming he's crushed because his dad didn't come back again. Or I don't know. He also thought he was dead. So I'm not quite sure why he was upset. But I like to think he's sad. That is. Then he turns and there he is. And every time water works. And then the whole thing between Laurie and Shane, which is not my favorite. But ooh, bitch. And then <laughs> the best part <laughs> in this episode is when Shane beats the ever living fuck oh. Bed. the best thing that Shane is my ever favorite did. part you get some of the best jokes out of the women doing the yes. laundry yes. <laughs> oh, that the is laundry right. scene oh yeah. wow it's yep. hilarious 
This is also the first episode we see Carol. I love being reminded of the arc that she had throughout this entire season. I really get emotional when I go back and watch this episode and I see how she started and I think about how fucking strong and amazing she is by the end. Fuck. It just really gets me every time. No, me too. She's one of the reasons I love the show so much, her and Daryl. She's so tough. And you see her at the beginning. And I remember being that person. It's so powerful. I have to say, really hats off to the writers. They nailed (laughs) an an abused spouse. They they nailed (sighs) how to write that character. I know some people would maybe look at that and be like, that's so over the top, but it's so not. It's so dead on for how, how those interactions go. Would Carol be the same person she is now had Sophia lived? Or would she still be the same Carol she was in the beginning? Or would she be somewhere in between? That is a really good question and really tough to answer. I think she'd I be think... maybe a little more balanced would be my thought. Because we saw her go so far off the deep end, especially when we think about season 10 Carol and how not yeah. okay she was. She was going to blow up the whole world. She had blinders That's how on. little she cared about yeah. anything outside of her vendetta against Alpha. And I don't know that you would have gotten that extreme had her path not gone the way that it did. Having so Sophia around would have given her, her a reason. To reality. Yeah, it would have. And it, having Sophia around would have given her a reason to be a little more cautious. Obviously, she does survive, but she would have thought to herself, I need to survive for my daughter. I think she still would have been just as fierce and just as badass, but Bridget said more, more tethered, more sub, I don't know if subdued is right, is the right word, but more well, cautious. Maybe just I think more like cautious. A, a little more gentle. And I'm not saying that she doesn't have that. It's just that it gets so buried under all of the trauma. I think that that's what we finally get in this last season with Carol. You finally kind of get to see that, but I don't think it would have taken that long for her to get there. But to be fair, when you leave an abusive relationship, you do really go opposite side of the spectrum. Maybe it would have been like this all along. Maybe it really didn't matter because I was really self-destructive. After being told you can't do what you want to for so long, every impulse in your brain is like, I've got to go do that. You're conditioned. It's baffling because there's a part of your brain that's like, that is not a good idea. Why would you go do that? But you're so like, no, I finally have the freedom to make the choices that I want. They're not even choices you want to make. You're just so apt to just go along with every single impulse that you have because you can. We have to mention Glenn and the Mustang too. That yeah. happened in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> My number one is season five, episode nine. What happened and what's going on? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So much so. Oh, wow. And I purchased this beautiful piece of artwork by by Kirk Manley and then also had it signed by Chad Coleman because I loved the show. And there are so many episodes of the show that really spoke to me on so many different levels. But (laughs) I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry talking about this. I, I don't know what it is about this one. I guess it's the seeing someone finally just let go and give up. This is a crippling episode for me to watch. It's not that long after Beth is gone. Beth was a character that I really loved because she showed the innocence and the hope in humanity that people could still have. And we lost that. That was its own thing because you thought she was going to get out of it and then she didn't. And it was just devastating. And it was devastating to Daryl, who was such an impactful character to me and in my life. And it was just so sad. And I felt so horrible for Maggie because it happened after she lost her dad and she thought she was going to get her sister back. And then she doesn't. And it's devastating. And we get Noah out of this story arc, as you guys know. In this episode, they are going to Noah's family's neighborhood. And that's a whole nother heartbreaking story because Noah finally got out and got away from Brady and goes back in hopes that he'll find his family and they're gone. They've been destroyed by the wolves. We're introduced to this concept of the wolves, which we don't know much about for for a while, but there are groups out there that are just horrible. And now we're seeing that over and over again, right? We saw the claimers, we saw the people at Grady, now we saw the wolves, and it's just kind of one right after the other terminus. There's no way that anyone's ever going to be okay or safe. There's no good people left in this world is what it's starting to look like. Our group against everybody. Noah's 
twin baby brothers, I guess one of them bites Tyrese while he's in this house. And it's a devastating moment. Tyrese is such a big, strong guy and you're so hopeful for him. And he's been so gentle and forgiving with Carol. And there's hope that he's going to be able to make it through all of the sadness that he's suffered. There's all of these really weird delusional scenes. They're not flashbacks or anything. These weird fever dreams. The character's and, coming back to him. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we see the governor and we see Gareth, who Tyrese let live. He holds himself responsible for Bob's death, which Bob would have died either way, but... Wasn't it Martin? Oh, yes, you're so. right. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Ma- it's Martin. Martin left it's Martin. Martin. It's this horrible thing that Tyrese is trying to work through. And then we see Beth. It's a cool Easter egg, but we hear Andrew Lincoln's actual voice with his British accent because he is the radio announcer. I did not I know that. About that. Yeah, so that's that's Andrew yeah. Lincoln's actual voice. There's some really special moments in this, and it was... Mika it was really- and uh, Mika and Lizzie come back to him, too. Yes, and that story just wrapped up and was super sad. It's all of this sadness, and you can just mm. feel it with him, these waves of crushing, overwhelming sadness of uh, Beth is gone, and she and she was the hope and the, and the naivety of the potential of the future, and Lizzie and and Mika are gone, which were the actual future. All of this stuff is just kind of piling all the sadness and they cut off his arm in the car and you think, well, he'll be fine, but he chooses not to be. He chooses to let go. And that is just such a powerful and sad thing to happen at the same time. But it just goes to show that you still have power in your life, even when it feels like you don't, because he had the power to say, I'm done. This is too much for me. I cannot keep going with all sadness all of the time. And there's no good people left in the world. One of the things that stuck out to me in that episode was at the end when everyone around him is panicking. You're seeing it through his view. He's watching everybody carry him through the fence and his foot is stuck and they're trying to get him undone from the fence and they get him in the car and all this whole time he's serene and calm and everyone else is freaking out and then he gets in the car and they start driving and then the car stops and everybody just gets out and you just know and then i think that's also one of my favorite scenes yeah of the entire show is the car stopping and everyone just getting out but there's beautiful music right like you're saying he, he 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 made the decision to give up and he was serene and calm with it but everybody else was the one who was suffering which is kind of the point of this whole show isn't it we're the ones who live but we're also the ones that have to live with everybody else dying carry it with us yeah well and and that's what happens to us right the people around us they die. And we're the ones who have to carry on with that sadness. They don't have that sadness anymore. And it and it doesn't matter what you believe in terms of your belief system. Everyone can agree they don't have to carry the weight of the world right. anymore. Right. I There's love just... I love when the show tells us these things with no dialogue. I love the lack mm-hmm. of words and well, when I mean, you feel it so heavy like that. Picture tells a thousand words right yeah yes i put out feelers for everybody's top five episodes online so i'm gonna read some of them out here aiden his top five were no way out no mm-hmm. sanctuary rest in peace beside the dying fire and two those are out. those are all really those great are episodes. very good episodes <laughs> it's um, so hard to pick five so i know i am really surprised that aiden doesn't have any ones with nadia rosita nadia. with nadia <laughs> rosita <laughs> Thomas at Celtic TSO on socials. His top five are Days Gone By, Mm -hmm. What Comes After, Here's Negan, The Grove, and Pretty Much Dead Already. Brian Castrillo at BC Castrillo on Instagram and Brian Castrillo 2 on Twitter. His top five are, counting down from five, Too Far Gone, No Sanctuary, Pretty Much Dead Already, Days Gone By, and Clear. Clear. He's a big Morgan guy, Brian. Yeah. David Strand at Errant Guide on Instagram. His top five are The Grove, Here's Not Here, mm. A, Too Far Gone, and Last Day on Earth. David, you have some weird preferences, my friend. <laughs> right? <laughs> Mitchell Shoemaker. His top five are Days Gone By, No Way Out, Tell It to the Frogs, Rest in Peace, and Stalker. I'm assuming... Mitchell, this is your favorite episode because of the beta attack. Beta kills Laura in this. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. he throws her. Which I hate. 
Yeah. I don't like this episode I kinda, at all. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> blocked that one out of my memory. Oh uh, yeah. I don't like this one. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Mitchell, you need to email or DM us telling us you're irrational. <laughs> I evaluate <laughs> Mitchell. Make, that, make sense of this. Episode. Christy Boykin on Instagram says her top five are days gone by. No sanctuary. Clear. Nebraska. And here's okay. not here. Nebraska was a good I've one. A I did. I did enjoy ones. Nebraska. Yes. We are I've getting a lot, a lot of the same, same ones. Yep. Yeah. It's good because um, we all think alike. <laughs> AJ at AJ Graham 18 on Instagram. His top five are number five, Too Far Gone, No Sanctuary, No Way Out, What Comes After, and Rest in Peace. Donnie, who I don't know what the hell her fucking username is right now. Uh, Sylvie <laughs> or something, I think. Donnie, you mm-hmm. know who you are. Mm-hmm. Her top five is still Coda, Slab Town, The Day Will Come When You Won't Be, and Wrath. Beth heavy. I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. Donnie. Takira on Instagram. New baby for Tony. Yeah, something like that. And Tashiyama on Twitter. Her top five <laughs> is Rest in Peace, Days Gone By, Hearts Still Beating. <laughs> Takira, please send us a DM or an email explaining why that episode made your top five. No Way That's Out. That's a pretty good sense. one. It's the one where Rosita tries to shoot Negan. There's yeah. some really... Good Olivia moment. dies in that yeah. episode. But why Olivia is that? Is that it? I'm just curious. Is it because of Rosita? Yeah. Is it because of, her number one is on the inside? Connie and Virgil Connie, episode. Right, 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 mm-hmm. right. That's the horror mm-hmm. episode. That one's great. That one almost went on my list, but there was a severe lack of Carol, so I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was fun. It's very interesting to see everybody's takes on what their favorite episodes and why. Why it's their favorite episode. Yeah. There were some awesome. similar episodes, but other ones. A that was really cool. It's a good episode. I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm actually surprised we didn't have a lot more similarities, to be honest. Yeah. If you have comments, guys, put them in the comments. What are your top five episodes and why? Because you might need to justify some answers, <laughs> right, <laughs> depending uh, on what you pick. Those of you I have called out, I expect your DMs. Yeah. Well, you got some splaining to do. <laughs> Slide into her DMs. <laughs> Slide, barge, knock the door down, don't dead open inside. I don't care. Just let us know why. <laughs> thought these episodes were your favorites. I have been uh, Sharon D, aka Blazy Gardner, and I've been joined by Rachel, aka Cosmo Mom 09, and Bridget. You can tell them your own damn socials. <laughs> Ponky. AKA Punky Brewster, or AKA Ponky, AKA Chonky <laughs> Brewster. I am X Prophecy Girl on Twitter and Ain't My First Rodeo on Instagram. We will see you guys on the next one, which should be our top five worst characters. And boy, this was a fun list to come up with. <laughs> This was difficult. I only have two. So I had to really, really <laughs> oh think. My God. I had to really think about it. And if you like what you've heard, everybody, head on over to ratethispodcast.com slash walking dead. Five stars and eggplant is all we need to know that you love us. But tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. Tell us what your top five was and whether you agreed, disagreed, enjoyed, changed your mind about any of these top five best episodes of The Walking Dead. And if you really like what you've heard, head on over to either kodishify.com slash squawking dead or patreon.com slash squawking dead and just follow us. You don't have to buy us a coffee. You don't have to join a membership tier for a dollar a month. When you follow us, you are in the know about any new behind the scenes posts, whether they are public or private, behind a paywall or not. And uh, should you decide to buy us a coffee, you'll get 30 days of support back content on kodishify.com slash squawking dead or if you join a membership tier on either Patreon or Kofi, you will receive all those benefits in per- perpetuity, even at a dollar a month. And should you decide to join one of the upper tiers, the Whispers or Survivors tiers, you will have the pleasure of having your credits mentioned in every episode. First off, with the Survivors tier member, we have at Elisa Jones 71 on Instagram or at Jones 86 on Twitter, at Real Ryan GM on Twitter, Takira, who you can reach at ko-ify.com slash Connie Dixon for life. That's Connie Dixon, the number four, L Y F. And of course, Linda Peck Athens, our fan art Lindy, which you can reach at ko-fi.com slash fan art Lindy. And of course, no list would be complete without at Judith.Morton on Instagram. Aiden Atkin, who you can reach at ko-fi.com slash Aiden Atkin at Tyler Phillip Cox on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as J 
Voorhees on both Instagram and Twitter. And of course, Sandy.D.Morrison on Facebook. I've been your host, David Cameo. And you were joined by the three lovely ladies, Cosmo, Zero, and I, Rachel Burt, Sharon D, aka Blazy Gardener, and of course, Bridget, aka Punky Brewster, aka Chonky Brewster. <laughs> you can reach at ko-fi.com slash Punky Brewster. That's P-U-N-K-Y-B-R-U-I-S-E-T-E-R. Please feel free to like, follow, share, subscribe, and uh, help us branch out into other fandoms and reach other people as we branch out beyond the Walking Dead universe. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you.